Sonia Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, October 12th. Okay, so we have the moon in Aquarius energy here all day, which definitely provides us an opportunity to kind of emotionally detach from our situation, from our circumstances, from our thoughts, from our feelings, in order for us to act as the observer, to kind of see the greater, grander picture, to kind of think outside of the box on how we're going to, again, problem solve some of the issues that definitely were in our face over the course of the last couple of days of having that moon in Capricorn energy energy. We should have realized where it is that we're blocked, where we're limited, where we're held back, where we're restricted, where we've been banging our head against the wall, coming up with solutions of trying to set ourselves free from the power struggle of relationship dynamics of our inner realm of the physical circumstances of the old version of the realm and reality that we've been living in that was created by that old version of self. Of course, the Aquarius energy wants us to be innovative in our solutions wants us to be progressive with our thoughts, with our ideas. We're definitely more focused on the future vision, the future goal, so that we can break that big vision up into smaller pieces and definitely see where it is that a new structure needs to be built, new plan, new strategy needs to come into effect to help us get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. Of course, Pluto just went direct in Capricorn energy here yesterday. So today is the first full day that Pluto, the great transformer, is going to be on all systems go, really empowering us to kind of boss up, see where it is that we have power and control over some of the things, some of the circumstances in our lives, especially where it is that, again, we've been feeling held back. We've been feeling like we were anchored into an old world that we no longer resonate with. Today is actually the last day that Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, will be in Libra energy, which of course had us back and forth and teeter, totter, up and down, coming to no kinds of decisions, coming to no kinds of realizations that actually make sense. So it's going to be very refreshing to have Mercury shift into Scorpio energy here on the 13th. That is going to blend our intellect with our intuition. If you want to take a listen to that astro forecast, definitely check that out so that you know what to expect in the coming of weeks. And again, if you haven't downloaded your October energy guide for your specific zodiac sign, I'm going to recommend you do that as well so that you know where these transits are actually impacting your life. So there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Aquarius energy going to sextile beautiful interaction with the north node in Aries energy. That north node is trying to get us on the right path to where it is that we need to be for our soul's mission, for our soul's potential, for a brand new mission and purpose. So again, the moon in Aquarius definitely having us futuristically focused. And in this particular interaction, we're starting to see where it is that there are spaces, there are moves available to us that we could make to help us heal, to help us grow, to help us evolve, to be the version of self that we need to be in order to end up in our futuristic vision, goal, or dream. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who's now retrograde in Gemini energy, again, reflecting back, reviewing, revisiting old ideas, old topics, old themes, old wisdom, old knowledge, and trying to integrate it into the present moment, into the here and now, so that, again, we can avoid repeating past patterns, past mistakes. Jupiter is going to be sextiling beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is also retrograde, but in Aries energy. So here's the thing. This is the first of three interactions between these guys. The second one will be November 2nd. The third one will be May 18th of 2025. And that is going to be at the very tail end of Jupiter's transit in this Gemini energy before moving into Cancer energy. So when we have Jupiter, who usually does bring a magnification of a bigger, broader perspective, where he does bring a certain level of optimism, a certain level of confidence to us. But again, keep in mind that he's retrograde, so it's not as intense as it normally would be if Jupiter was direct. What we're getting here is an opportunity to start what is going to be 
a long-term transit with the dates in which I previously mentioned to help us kind of see where it is that we have to broaden our horizons, especially when it comes to experiences that are going to educate us, especially with where it is that we can be better, where it is that we can do better. We want to see where we have options and opportunities to grow, to evolve, to expand our information, our knowledge, and how to help ourselves. This is essentially trying to free us from a lot of the restriction, a lot of the limitations that we've been feeling, trying to break us free from a lot of the negative moods and attitudes that we've been sitting in for a very long time. This is trying to open us up to actually being real and raw and vulnerable enough to learn from one another without getting triggered and activated. This is kind of an energy that is preparing us to better understand other people, understand ourselves, to challenge different viewpoints, challenge different thoughts and opinions. This is a time where, again, we are being challenged, although it is a, you know, we're still adjusting to Jupiter having gone retrograde. We are trying to adjust our perspective, our mind state, our inner dialogue, our inner narrative. We're trying to challenge that to to upgrade it, to boss up so that we can at least start seeing different perspectives, different angles to a lot of the situations and circumstances that we've been very narrow minded with. This has a lot to do with taking a good look back to the tough love life lessons that we've already gone through, that we've already learned the hard way and trying to pluck out the silver linings of those experiences and actually integrate them into the present moment to again, avoid repeating past patterns, past behaviors, past experiences. And of course, we don't want to make the same mistakes again. So there's going to be a lot of aha moments that are going to come at us from now until, like I said, the time frames in which I previously mentioned, not just from Jupiter and Chiron, but a lot of the planetary transits that are on the move are going to help again, kind of broaden our horizons, open up our mind, help us focus on the areas of our lives that we need to do better, that we need to be better. And especially where Chiron being retrograde in Aries energy has everything to do with like bringing this new version of self online and doing what we can to heal the trauma wounds of the past version of self. This has everything to do with our mental health awareness. Okay, so we're definitely we got the Gemini energy that Jupiter is in. And we got the Aries energy that Chiron is in. That is an air and fire energy that again, when they spark off, there is a new perspective, a new aha moment, a new epiphany that we can't unknow. We have to run with it, see where it takes us. The moon in Aquarius energy is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron. So this is, again, putting into perspective where it is that we want to end up examining the parts of our inner dialogue our inner narrative or in our physical realm that aren't up the snuff, aren't feeling confident, aren't feeling stabilized enough to actually see ourselves in the vision and the dream that we're currently trying to imagine for ourselves. So emotionally speaking, again, this moon in Aquarius is allowed allowing us to see ourselves from like an outsider's point of view. And that makes it a little bit easier to see where it is that again, we may be acting out of pain and trauma wounds, and not realizing that again, we're stuck in a loop, we're stuck in a program that needs to be broken. The sun in Libra energy going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibility, system structures, foundations, willpower and discipline. And of course, Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy, trying to wrap up a 30 year cycle, trying to show us what of the old world, the old belief system, the old goals, visions and dreams need to go where it is that we need to again wrap up the old in order to clear the space, clean the slate to have the space to build something something new in the place of the things that we're no longer resonating with. So the sun kind of shining a bright light in this Libra energy on where the scales are out of whack and out of balance, the sun interacting with Saturn, it's not a harsh reality check, but we're definitely seeing things from a more serious set of eyes. We're seeing where the structures of our lives are weak are struggling to stand tall, stand stable. We are seeing, especially where relationships are concerned, because this is where Libra energy is currently anchored, 
Who and what needs to stay and needs to go? Where we have the ability to reconcile and compromise, where we have the ability to make a clean sweep in some situations, and where we have the ability to, again, get down to the nitty gritty, try something new, implement new routines, new structures in order for the relationship dynamic to get on even playing fields. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the final degrees of this Libra energy, making a very harsh interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, is retrograde in his placement of power in Pisces energy towards the final degrees as well. And this is definitely going to put us in a certain level of insecurity, a certain level of confusion and delusion. It's almost like we have a hunch on what we need to do. We have a hunch on some of the details in which we're lacking. However, Neptune creates a fog of confusion and really puts us in a situation where again, Mercury in this Libra energy can't come to a decision anyways. The indecisiveness is just too much. And the confusion and delusion coming from Neptune is putting us in a situation where we're onto something, but we're also realizing that we have to have a little bit more patience. We have to wait and see. There are more details, more circumstances that need to come to light before we're going to be well informed enough to make any kind of choice point, any kind of decision. So, of course, the uncertainty, the confusion definitely going to get to us. There is this aspect where we want to kind of check out from reality, live in la-la land, conjure up some daydreams, but those daydreams aren't really rooted in what is possible, what we can actually obtain, what we can actually achieve. So there's definitely going to be, let's call it a lull in our motivation, in our faith. There's going to be a little bit of a disconnect in our inner realm, being able to think and feel clearly enough to communicate what's actually going on within us to other people. Definitely some mental disorganization there. The scales are being tipped I'm going to say against us, not in our favor at all. And sitting in this confusion element, we could spiral if we're not careful, kind of creating some mental anxieties where there doesn't need to be any. The moon in Aquarius is going to semi-square Neptune there shortly thereafter. And that in itself is just going to amplify where it is that we're confused as all F about how we're going to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we're desiring to be. The level of uncertainty, of confusion, of questioning definitely getting to us. The moon, of course, in Aquarius energy has us acting as the observer, but all we're observing right now is that we are lacking the information that we 100% need. And instead of having the patience to wait and see and find out, we are spiraling in our mental plane, in our emotions, trying to come up with answers that, again, we can't come up with at this particular juncture. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. So this tells me that, again, we kind of see where it is that we're losing ourselves under that Neptune influence, where it is that we're creating anxieties and confusions that, technically speaking, don't need to be in existence. The moon in Aquarius energy, again, giving us that observer type of mentality, that observer type of perspective, kind of meeting up with Saturn in this way. Saturn brings a lot more reality to the situation, especially compared to the confusion and some, let's call it anxiety situations that we're just conjuring up in our mental plane, trying to fill the gaps of the information and details that we currently don't have. Having the moon and Saturn kind of come together, this is going to help us, I'm going to say, organize our thoughts a little bit better, organize our emotions better for sure, but also put into perspective where it is that we have to build a new sense of self, a new sense of the vision that we actually want to start building towards and manifesting, and where it is that we just need to stabilize inside of ourselves for this present moment until new information gets revealed to us. We have Mercury then making an interaction, a not favorable one, with Saturn. So this is definitely going to bring on the negative narrative. This is going to put us in a situation where we're hypersensitive to either the thoughts that we're thinking, which are going to be negative, 
or what is being said to us, which again, we're not receiving in the way that it's meant to be received or the situations and circumstances that we're creating in a false sense of reality. Again, that's what anxiety is. We're going to be oversensitive to all the information that we're either creating within ourselves or coming at us from the external realm. If we feel judged, if we feel criticized by anyone, that is likely going to trigger and activate us in ways that have us kind of verbal vomiting, saying a lot of things that we don't actually think that we don't actually feel. And so although we want desperately to have some kind of clarity to come to some sort of solution, this isn't the energy to do it. And so instead of just, you know, kind of stabilizing and keeping our, I'm going to say mouth shut until this energy shifts into something better, we could find that we are the problem and we are going to make particular situations worse. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Aquarius energy trining beautiful interaction with the sun in Libra energy. So this is air on air action. And we have the moon and the sun coming together to reveal a new want, new need, new desire, uh, basically illuminating what it is that we need to do. Now, the moon in Aquarius, again, futuristically focused, the sun in Libra still in the present moment, trying to bring those scales into balance. We have the ability because this is an air energy to see things differently. Again, the Aquarius energy acting as the observer, seeing the bigger, broader picture. And on the smaller, let's call it micro scale, the sun in Libra, again, trying to adjust those scales between our heart and our head, trying to adjust those scales between the old versus the new, trying to adjust the scales between our inner realm and our outer realm to see where it is that we have actions that could be taken, moves that could be made at this particular point in time to bring those scales into balance, to really see where it is that adjustments could be made, especially with the way that we're thinking, the way that we're talking to ourselves, the way that we're communicating ourselves, those little adjustments could make the world of difference. So this is going to be an aha moment on where it is that, again, intellectually speaking, new insights, new perspectives are being revealed to us, new ideas popping off that, again, we can make adjustments into our physical realm, especially with the way that we're acting, especially the way that we're communicating with the people, with the world around us.